Hey there my fellow intellectuals, how are you doing today? Kyle here, and today I thought I'd do a fun little video for you guys where I would talk about the books that I decided to keep with me in quarantine. Now as you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is still ongoing, and because of that I've had to work from home for the past couple of months. And before I went home and permanently started working from home, I went to my office and collected a few books that I thought would keep me company during this quarantine time, and I thought I would just show you which books I thought out of my big collection that I thought would be worth keeping with me during this time while I'm in lockdown. So some of these books you may have seen before in my videos, but maybe I didn't talk about them that much, and some of them I don't think I talked about them at all before, so this might be a treat for you and give you an idea of what kind of books that I like to keep with me as a, as a natural physics PhD candidate. And yeah, I guess that's it. Let's just, uh, let's get right into it, right? So, so the first one I'm going to pull up is one I think I've talked about before, and that is uh, Galactic Dynamics by James Binney and Scott Tremaine. And this is probably one of the most important astrophysics textbooks of the 21st century. It is a really, really dense and complicated textbook and reference book that a lot of people in the field will cite in their papers. So this book, as you can see, has these two galaxies about to merge with each other. And this book is sort of all about that kind of, that kind of uh, interaction. It's about how galaxies merge, how they interact, how the stars in them uh, move in different kinds of gravitational potentials and gravitational fields, and it is extremely dense. I don't think I am, uh, I would say, a novice at mathematics, but at the same time, this book is very, very mathematically challenging. The problems are hard, and it is not for the faint of heart. So I would recommend it if you are you know, well advanced in physics and mathematics, but if not, I would say brush up on definitely your classical mechanics, your vector calculus, your partial differential equations, your, uh, you know, uh, function expansions, just, you got to be super adept at math before you jump into a book of this caliber. It's just, it's just that hard. Okay. And um, I don't, you, I don't really read this book per se. I sort of uh, go through the book and at different sections and pick out things that might be helpful and necessary for me to know in my own research. But I have not taken the challenge of trying to go through this book in its entirety, though I think it might be a fun challenge one day if I want to get into galactic dynamics, which is actually a very important concept when you are studying how to measure black hole masses like I am. But I, I don't specialize in this method, so that's why it's not on the, uh, on the uh, uh, priority list at the moment. So that's it for this book, and I'm going to put it down, and I'll pull up another book for you guys. Okay, so next up on the list is a counterpart to Galactic Dynamics, is Galactic Astronomy by, once again, James Spinney and now Michael Merrifield. Now this book is a little bit on the older side. It's from 1998. I've talked about this book before on my channel before, but uh, I'll go over it again for those of you who are new. Essentially, this was at a time, and I'd say probably some people would consider it to be sort of the Bible for people who do observational galactic work. So if you look at galaxies, whether it's the Milky Way or galaxies outside the Milky Way, you would want a copy of this book because it has just an amazing, I'd say, amount of information of the fundamentals that you need to know about galaxies. And even though this book is now about 22 years old, it still is a valuable reference to anyone in the field. There are some things that are not quite up to date, which you have to be wary for. Um, such as the fact that I don't I think the expansion of the universe was literally just discovered maybe the year that this book was published or the year before and so, so that was the the 1998 supernova uh, discovery where they where they where they used supernova to show that the, the universe was expanding and so that information I don't believe is in this book or if, or if it is it's very brief and not that mentioned and maybe not expounded upon but nonetheless these are some things that, happen to textbooks over time where you have just new information coming because astronomy is not a fully complete field, right? There are so many things that we don't know that we constantly need to update and revise over time as we learn about them. So 
Again, I'll say this book, while being 22 years old, still a very, very valuable reference to any budding galactic astronomer. I have taken upon me to do a lot of the problems in this book, which I find to be quite fun. Some of them kind of confusing. I've actually had to even email Michael Merrifield to get his advice on some of the problems, or, or one problem, I think, in, in particular. But nonetheless, very, very solid book on galactic astronomy. I really enjoy reading it. I've, As you can see here, I've, got, I've tabbed it up just to uh, sort of, you know, keep important topics in the front of my mind and always ready to be available for me to jump into whenever I need them. So again, highly recommend this book. It's not easy to get a copy of these, especially now that uh, the pandemic is going on and Amazon deliveries might be delayed. But if you can get this book, totally recommend it. I I love it. You know, I really love this book. I like to read it just to sort of refresh my, uh, my knowledge of galactic astronomy. Okay, next up on the list is a heavy one. This guy's a heavy book right here. And it's a big orange book. It's a bob. It's an introduction to modern astrophysics by Carolyn Osley. Now, this is over, I want to say, 1,400 pages of amazing information. Now, what does that mean exactly? Well, this textbook, like the name, like its name would suggest, is an introduction to all the sort of things you'd need to know in uh, modern astrophysics. So it starts off with sort of astronomical positions, uh, the celestial sphere, how to sort of understand uh, right ascension declination, those are the coordinates of astronomical objects, goes into Kepler's laws, and really, really, I think, does a good job of explaining how the different physics you learn as an undergraduate, especially you know, classical mechanics and statistical mechanics, quantum mechanics, all of those core subjects are used in astrophysics uh, by by just, you know, practicing astrophysicists and astronomers. I mean, it's just a really beautiful text, I think, to get anyone introduced to the field of astrophysics. And I really like it because it reads fairly easily. You can just sort of read this book for fun if you want to. I mean, they have a whole section on the pl on the solar system. I'm not a planetary scientist or exoplanet hunter uh, by any means, but I found it just very fun to just read the sections about the planets and the solar system, which was honestly the first thing I got really into when I was a young kid, when I was first sort of trying to think about things that interested me. I remember the planets just being fascinating. The, the colors were really beautiful, and I wanted to know more about Neptune and Uranus and Saturn and all the other sort of gas giants and even the terrestrial planets that are in the neighborhood of Earth I want to learn more about. So this book really, really covers a lot of ground in 1,400 pages, as it probably should. And I would, like I think with my all, all my books, I would highly recommend it, right? I, I would highly recommend this book, honestly, if you are someone who has a decent background in math and physics at the undergraduate level and want to know more about astrophysics. The math in here is not that difficult, in my opinion, for somebody who already has a degree in physics or, or is close to finishing a physics degree, or even somebody who is doing like a math or or a related degree. I think that uh, the, the, the most math you probably need is calculus and differential equations, if I'm not mistaken, and you will do fine in this book. It's just sort of applying those mathematical frameworks to astrophysics. So again, very, very heavy book, um, very thick, but well worth the purchase. And it also helps that this book is orange because orange is my favorite color. So I'm really uh, happy to have this book in my collection, just be a big orange book on my favorite subject. So uh, really recommend Bob by Carolyn Nosley. And I think I'm done plugging it for now. So I'm going to go move on to the next book. So the next book that I want to talk about is An Introduction to Active Galactic Nuclei by Bradley Peterson. Now, Bradley Peterson is a collaborator of my advisor. My advisor is an expert in active galactic nuclei, or AGN for short. And this book actually came out, I think, when he was still actually in graduate school. So this book is from, I believe, 1997, I think. And it is still an extremely valuable reference to anyone who, who still wants to get into this field. I don't know anyone who does AGN who doesn't have a copy of this book somewhere in their office. And for someone like me who doesn't do AGN for their PhD as a specialty, it's extremely useful to have this and sort of know what are the big questions that people who do this field, do research in this field, ask and you know give me a foundation where I can 
sort of talk to them and understand the different kinds of problems they're tackling because a lot of people work on AGN and as someone who, like I said, who doesn't specialize in it, I'm always constantly having to remind myself certain things like, okay, you know, how do we differentiate between a CFRT1 and a 1.5 and a 2? You know, uh, what are the properties of blazars and why do we see potentially uh, observations that seem to to break the, the speed of light barrier and, and those sort of things. And this book sort of explains all of that, sort of explains the observations of AGN over over uh, many uh, over many uh, epochs because the way that usually you study AGN is that you have to look for time variability uh, on both long and short time scales, which means you just need a lot of observations from a lot of different nights. And so uh, it's just again, I think a very very great introduction to this subject that I don't think a ton of people think about too much uh, if you're not in the field. So if you're wondering what the heck is an AGN and you know why? Why would it, why would I care too much about it? And you have a, a decent background in you know STEM. I would definitely recommend picking this book up. I don't think any of the math is too complicated, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of the the equations are derived in a, in a fairly straightforward manner, and I think Bradley Peterson writes in a way that uh, is very explanatory and helpful for anyone who's trying to 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 learn this field for the first time. So definitely would recommend this book like I, I am with my all books. I think I'm just going to recommend every book I have to show you guys. I know, I know I, I just have a ton of books on me, but, um, you know, I graduate soon. I like my books and I like learning. So, uh, you know, what can you say? I just want to buy more books. So you should too. So the last book that I'm going to show you guys is the physical universe, an introduction to astronomy by Frank Shu. Now, this is easily the oldest book that I have that I brought home with me. This book is from 1982, I believe. It is, it is so old that it talks about the Hubble Space Telescope in the past tense because it was still more than 10 years before Hubble launched that this book was written and published. And interestingly enough, this book was written by a professor at UC Berkeley where my advisor, my own advisor, my own PhD advisor, was at for his for his own PhD. And my advisor even told me that when he was a first year graduate student, he actually TA'd for a class that used this book as its primary text. So that's kind of a funny or fun little um, fact about, about this book at least. As the name implies, it's an introduction to astronomy textbook. And like the year suggests, it's a little bit out of date. Of course, Hubble was not born yet. It was still 10 years out in the making. But nonetheless, I really enjoy just reading this book. It does a really good job of explaining different parts of astronomy, ex explains different important historical events in astronomy. And I think it's just a fun read, honestly. The book was written for both majors and non-majors, as in astronomy majors and non-astronomy majors, because the author even states that you could just read this book if you're an astronomy major, if you're not not an astronomy major, sorry, and just never do any of the problems. But if you are an astronomy major, you would probably want to do the problems in the text to get a better understanding of the concepts. And I really see what he means because if you actually read the book, a lot of the complicated topics are often relegated to a problem in the book, so you don't have to sort of get lost in a ton of equations in the text itself which I think is nice for people who may not want to to be burdened by the the complicated mathematics that is is present in this book. I mean, you can't really formally learn astronomy or astrophysics exactly. without delving into a decent amount of mathematics. So, and physics of course. So, one. it's an oldie but a goodie as I say. I really enjoy reading it. It's just fun to pick up and read and sort of see what our knowledge was in 1982 of astronomy. And again, like galactic astronomy, even though it's old, it has all the basics there. Some things just don't change over time. And I think anyone who wants to just have a nice reading book and you don't have to think too much about equations uh, in the text and you can just skip the problems, definitely pick this up. But also keep an open mind that this book is, like I said, from 1982 and that you should know that some things are not perfectly up to date. For example, I was reading how the book was explaining that Pluto was one of the nine planets. Of course, we know that that's no longer the case because it got demoted by the IAU. Uh, but nonetheless, just keep an open mind, like I said, and I think you'll have a fun time reading this book as hopefully as much as I have, because I actually, I have been reading this one. This is the one I've been reading the most the past couple of days, and I'm really, really loving this book. It's 
it's refreshing. Frank Shu writes in a really sort of humorous tone, if you will, and I think it just sort of strengthens my overall basic understanding of astronomy, which, you know, I think is important for anyone when you're sort of advanced in your career. You should always sort of strive to be a master, a real master of the fundamentals. So again, great book, highly recommend, like like I said, every other book. Did I not recommend any other book? There wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a video I wasn't going to recommend any of these other books because I think they're all extremely valuable for my education. And, um, and I think they would be, you know, helpful for you guys too. So those are essentially all the books I brought home from my office. And I hope you found this video entertaining. I hope you learned a little bit about some of the topics that these books expound upon. And uh, let me know in the comments what other kinds of videos you'd like me to to make. I mean, these are sort of videos about my own um, my own books and the things that I'm interested in. But maybe there's some aspect of being a PhD student in astrophysics that you might want to know about and uh, I haven't gone over yet. And I'd love to hear your ideas to know how I could make uh, you guys entertained and what you guys would find interesting. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to stay um, you know, up to date with my latest stuff. So thanks for watching, guys.